to everyone. My name is Joseph Skiro, and I'm very pleased to talk to you today about a very special copper plate of the Siege of Malta. And, but before I continue, for the benefit of those people who are not Maltese, I'm going to show you where Malta is. Malta, as you can see in the slide, is in the middle, in the middle of the Mediterranean. It's a group of islands consisting of Malta, Gozo and Comino. And as you can see, it's in the very center of the Mediterranean. In fact, some people call it the navel of the Mediterranean. And it's in the middle of, of uh, the Mediterranean and the very narrowest part of the Mediterranean. Now, I have to go back in time because the plate that I'm going to show you um, talks about the siege of Malta. Now, the siege of Malta occurred in 1565 when the Ottoman Empire, Empire attempted to, call, uh, to conquer the island of Malta, which was then held by the Knights of St. John. The siege lasted four months from 18th May to 8th September 1565. Now, the Knights Hospitallers had been in Malta since 1530 after being driven out of Rhodes, also by the Ottomans in 1522, following the siege of Rhodes. The Ottomans, who were the sworn enemies of the Knights, had already tried to take Malta in 1551, but failed. So again, in 1565, Suleiman the Magnificent, the Ottoman Sultan, made a second attempt to take Malta. However, under the Grand Master de Valette, Jean de, de Valette, the knights withstood the siege and repelled the invaders. Now, this episode, this event, was so important for, the, for Europe that it became one of the most celebrated events of 16th century Europe, to the point that Voltaire once said, nothing is better known than the Siege of Malta. And it even earned the title of, uh, earned Malta, the title of Propuniaculum Europe, which means the bulwark of Europe. Why? Because the Knights managed to stop the invasion of the Turks invading the whole of Europe. So they were the bulwark of, of, uh, of Christianity and keeping away the Muslim um, uh, onslaught onto, onto Europe. Uh, with that background, I go now to this picture where it shows the episodes of the siege, which are found in the palace of the Grand Masters, which is now the President's Palace in Valletta. After the, the, the siege of Malta, the Grand Master de Valette immediately started building the city of Valletta. And when they start, they first started building the fortifications, and then they started building the different palaces and uh, which are, are still found in, in the capital. One of the palaces is obviously the palace of the Grand Master. When they started decorating the palace, one of the, decora one of the rooms, which is the, 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 the throne room at the palace, was decorated with the frescoes of, these, of, these, uh, of, these, uh, of the Great Siege of 1565. By that time, Lavalette had, had died, and he was succeeded by Grandmaster Lacassier. And what he did was he commissioned Mattia Perez d'Alecho to do the paintings in the palace that we find today. However, and when Ma Mattia Perez d'Alecho came to Malta and he painted these, these um, uh, pictures, he wanted also to do the engravings of these, um, 
of these uh, wall paintings. Um, by the way, Perez da Lecce was born in Lecce, and you can see there in the, in the map where he was born. He was actually born at the very tip, at the heel of, of, the, of uh, Italy. And uh, he was a very big man, so much so that some people called him Il Castron Pugliese, because he was a big man. But he was a very adventurous man, and he went to Lima, Peru, on 6 November 1587. There he got married, and he died there also in 1616. I'm saying this because this is important to explain to you how this copper plate eventually um, was found in Peru, and it is now in my collection in Malta. This is one of the scenes which you, we find in the throne room. And it's a fresco which gives sort of a summary of all the episodes which uh, uh, happened in the siege, and they're all done in one drawing. So it's, a, it's a, an interesting um, uh, scene because it's a combination of different events of, 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 the, of the siege. So you've got the whole story of the siege in actually one drawing, so to speak. And uh, this is the original drawing which you will find in the palace. From it, as I said, he did uh, engravings of these, of, these, um, uh, of these scenes. And in fact, when he issued the album of these uh, scenes in 1582, even at the very beginning here, um, on the title page, he says that these are engravings from the scenes which have already been painted in the Grand Master's Palace. One of these scenes, as, you, as, as one of these engravings, is Folio Undecimo, which is plate 11, and it's called Dimostrazione di tutta la guerra. As I said, it showed the whole events uh, which happened during the Great Siege. And this is a print um, from the plate that we are going to show you. And this is the plate, um, uh, which is the matrix, which printed that, um, the, 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 the engraving, which I have just shown you. Now, this was a find in itself because very few copper plates still exist, survive um, in the world. And in fact, um, they, they run into, into, into single uh, numbers, not even tens. And in fact, I know of only one of, of two plates by Ortelius, um, one of America and the other one, uh, I don't know, Asia, I think. There's a, a, a fragment of another plate in, uh, of London, and there's another one I don't remember. And there is this one. So as you can see, the plate is very rare. Now from this plate, um, we have made a, a discovery because at the very corner, there, is the, there are those two letters NB, Natale Bonifacio. On the plate, they would be obviously on this side because it is a mirror image of the original um, of the of the copper plate of the print, and uh, why is it a discovery? Because up to this surfaced, we always thought that the the person who had engraved the plates was Mattia Perez da Lecce because he was an engraver and a good one, but. These particular plates of the siege, although the, the drawings were done by Mattia Perez d'Aleccio, the engraver was Natale Bonifacio. And uh, this is something which we had never um, uh, known before. And so that uh, on its own is already a discovery. And uh, as you can see, the, the plate from, uh, from uh, in detail, it, ha it has a lot of detail. In fact, these are, are, are the Turks attacking Fort um, uh, St. Elmo. 
and uh, it, there is another scene again from the same plate of another attack on on uh, on the Fort Saint Michael. So it's a combination of different um, uh, battle scenes of the of as I said of the whole um, uh, siege. But like most of the copper plates that are still um, extant, like, like the ones I mentioned to you of Ortelius and, uh, and this one by, by Matteo Perez Alecio, most of these plates on the, on the verso, they, you find paintings. Now, why did he, um, why do we have this painting of the Madonna on the, on the back of the plate? Perez Alecho, when he went to, to Peru, um, took these plates with him and he thought that he would be able to print the, the prints from there, but he did not have a rolling press to be able to do the printing. So he ended up with these copper plates and nothing, he could do nothing with them. So what did he do? He started teaching um, um, the artists in, in Lima, how to paint on copper. This was a technique which they didn't know. It was a technique which was used in Europe. So he started to teach them how to do oil painting on copper. And you say, as you can see, this is an incomplete picture of a Madonna. And this is an example, uh, uh, an exercise which he was doing in, with the other um, it, uh, painters from from Peru, how to do the, the, this this uh, this um, uh, oil painting on copper? So when it arrived, we had this added bonus of having this picture on the back of the, of the plate. Now, the person, because you have a story for everything. <laughs> The person who sold me the, the, the plate is this Eduardo Berbank, the picture you see on your left. And uh, he lived in Peru and it was given to him by his great grandfather um, as a gift on his graduation. And uh, he wanted to sell it and, and bring it back to Malta because his children were not really interested in the plate. So I bought it from him. And uh, one fine day, you can see the picture on your right, this Joachim Pinto Ferran phones me up and tells me that I, I had written about this plate. And he told me, I've seen your article and I am, the nephew of Eduardo Berbeng Ferran. Now, when I heard him on the phone, I thought he was quite near. So I asked him, where are you phoning from? He told me I'm phoning from Malta because I live in Malta and actually he lives in Zabar. So imagine the coincidence of this thing. And in fact, I invited him home home to see the plate and we had quite a, um, a good time together. He told me uh, uh, more about his uncle and in fact his uncle eventually moved to Miami um, afterwards. Uh, he was in, in, in business because um, these Ferrans um, had been to Peru, had gone to Peru in the, uh, in, uh, in, the eight, in the 18th century and they made quite a um, uh, they, they had a very good business and they were quite um, uh, wealthy. And his great grandfather was also a good uh, uh, collector. Now, the story doesn't end there because um, eventually I found another one in Peru. And uh, I am in negotiations with this person who owns this. Uh, other plate of the siege of from the from the album of, of the siege which Perez Alecho did. But this time the, the plate is folio septimo, so it's plate seven. 
And again, like most of the plates that we find of the 16th century, on the verso, there is a painting of the flight into Egypt, which was probably painted by one of those um, artists from Peru after doing this exercise with, with Perez Alicho. And in fact, there are some um, problems with the painting because as you can see, there are some of the, there's some of the oil painting which is missing there and there. That means that, that, the, that the student was not all that good and did not follow instructions as probably as, uh, but still it is a very important and it is cropped this time. In fact, um, if you can see here, it has been cropped up to the red line, but fortunately when they cropped it, they cropped it not from an edge, but they cropped it from uh, just the whole edges. So the main um, print is still there. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, uh, this plate is still in Peru. So hopefully when, uh, when the pandemic um, finishes, the person who owns it will be able to, to come to Malta because she wanted to, to bring it herself to Malta and we will have also this plate in, in, in our collection. I thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I also um, would like to say that um, although this plate is in my collection, I still believe that this is um, a, a museum piece. And eventually, um, I hope that this plate will uh, find itself in, 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 the muse in our National Museum. Obviously, until I'm alive, I, I will. <laughs> Um, uh, look after it and, uh, and enjoy it myself. <laughs> Thank you very much.